Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Space45 or Miles. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty much the artist on this channel, Nacho Cheese TV. Um, up in the right hand corner, that's Lance licking the gun. And in the left hand corner down there, that's me holding the butterfly knife. But, uh, anyways, I'm coming to you today with a tutorial on how I personally make my stencils and my process. Because I've seen a lot of tutorials out there on YouTube, and honestly, they're really not all that great. And I think you guys could learn a lot or anyone who watches this video could actually learn a lot about the process of making stencils. So uh, I have pretty much a little list um, drawn out and what it is is first you want to get your image then you're going to open it in Photoshop then the next step after that would be removing your foreground from your background so basically just taking out the background um, then adding a contrast and desaturating your image adding a blur to it, uh, posterizing it, separating your layers, and then individually coloring, coloring your layers. Um, and you'll see what I mean once I start this, but I'm just letting you guys know that's what this tutorial is basically going to have in it. And um, yeah, so let's move on. Alright guys, so what we're doing now is we're going to open up Google, and we're going to look for an image basically. So. What we're gonna do is we'll click on Google Images and uh, let's see. I'm just gonna try finding something that I like. It's important that once you're in Google Images that you um, select large on any size or underneath any size for what size images you want. Just because the higher the larger the picture, the higher the resolution is ten tends to be, and you get more detail out of it, and you can make a more detailed stencil out of it. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go search for an image. So now that I found my image, I'm just basically going to have to copy this image. This is a pretty big picture, so it's going to come out uh, pretty detailed in Photoshop and everything. So I'm just going to right-click, copy it, go ahead, close down Firefox at this point because we don't need it anymore, and open up Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, let's hit File, start a new project, so hit New. Uh, I use the preset uh, US paper and what it is it makes the width eight and a half inches and the height 11 inches and that just makes everything uh, proportional for when you go to print it and next thing you want to do is you want to hit control V and what that does is it paste your image hit control T and you can um, transform your image so if you hold down shift and then you pull on those corner squares like you see me doing what it's going to do, it's going to proportionally stretch out your image so it's not too long or not too wide. It keeps it pretty much the same proportions, just makes it bigger. And once you find where you really want to put it, just hit enter and it uh, saves those. Alright guys, so now it's time to remove our background. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use our pen tool. But first, let's just use our magnifying glass and zoom in on our image a little bit just so we can see what we're working with. So let's get our pen tool and just start plotting points all the way around. And um, I sped this up a little bit so it's easier on time for the tutorial's sake. But yeah, you don't really want to go too fast on this part because you want to have a nice good outline. And here we are again coming to the end. And what you want to do is when you hit your last point or the first point you made, it's going to make a path. You're going to right click and then hit make selection. And then just hit OK. And right there it made a selection around that whole path you just created. You want to hit our magic wand tool right click and then layer via cut you could turn your layer that hold held your background invisible and then that's what you're working with at this point all right guys so here's my image uh have the background unselected i'm just going to go ahead and delete it since we don't need that anymore and you can see i took out the bag from his hand just because um i didn't i didn't really like the bag that much and i would have had some islands i would have had to deal with but now what we're going to do is we're going to go to image, hit desaturate, that makes it black and white. Then go to image adjustments and go to brightness and contrast. And we're just going to turn up our, bright, uh, I mean our contrast a little bit. And <clears throat> what we're looking for is basically an even amount of blacks, grays, and whites. Because the whites are your highlights, the grays are your mids, and the blacks are your shadows. And these are essentially going to turn into your layers for the stencil. And that looks good. Alright guys, so now uh, we have our contrast on and we got it desaturated 
now we're going to add a blur. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, we're going to go to blur, and then we're going to go to Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. And then I like to keep my blur around 4 to 5 pixels in that area. I'll do 4.2 and that looks good enough. Just hit OK and then now we can move on. So now we have a nice blur on this image. It's going to dumb down our quality just a little bit, or not our quality, but our detail. And so when we go to our adjustments and then posterize, we could choose how many layers you want. And since we did add that blur previous, it's basically going to make the edges just a little bit smoother and a little bit easier to cut, as well as give it a more consistent look throughout the stencil. Um, I think we're going to go with uh, about four layers for this one just because I'll be able to cut it out and paint it so you guys get to see what the whole process looks like. And it gives a good amount of detail and um, it won't be too much work. Even though it's not going to be super easy, it still won't be too much work. And you can see how I have some of those rounded edges in there because of that blur. And um, without that, you'd have some really tough edges to cut. So that's why you add the blur. Alright guys, now this pretty much is ready to be separated into the layers that will be cut and sprayed. So let's duplicate our existing layer, let's, the original one, make it invisible. Then with our magic wand tool we want to right click our image and just select the black, the darkest color we have. And right click it in layer via cut. And you can go ahead and delete the layer that it creates and you got something that looks like this. Then do the same thing over again, you want to duplicate your layer, you want to turn that Ex original one invisible. You want to right click your image, <clears throat> use your dabber, your color dabber, to select the darkest color. Previously we selected the black, now we're going to select the darkest gray that we have. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and delete the layer that we created after doing the layer via cut. And basically just keep re repeating that until you have all four of your layers separated. And as you can see, um, I'm making our background pink just so I can pretty much distinguish my layers easier because with the white background they blend in a little bit and you can see that's pretty much all the layers together alright so we have our layers separated now what we want to do is we want to make them all look alike because they all have every other layer that would come after it inside of itself so what I mean is I'm gonna make every layer look the same so <clears throat> let's get our magic wand tool and we're going to right click our pink background. I'm just showing you that we want to turn off all our other layers while we do this. Just do one at a time. We're working with layer one right now. So let's select our background by right clicking with our uh, magic wand tool and hitting color range. Selecting the background and then selecting inverse. Then once you hit select inverse you want to go to edit, fill, and then color. And you want to go all the way down to black. Because this is our first layer, it's going to be our darkest layer. So we're just going to fill it in with black. And you're just going to pretty much repeat this step with our next layer, which would be layer 2. And this layer is actually going to be gray. Because if you look at it right now, the darkest color on there is that dark gray. Because the black is no longer in there. Um, that will be taken care of by the first layer. And so let's do the same thing where you want to select the background with the color range. You want to select inverse. And then you want to fill it and go to color. And this time you want to do a dark gray. Last time we did black because it was layer one this is layer two we want to make it a little bit lighter make it a dark gray <clears throat> so we pretty much you just repeat those steps throughout this and or for the next uh, remaining layers whether you're doing a four layer like me or doing more just basically you're just gonna take those layers and you're gonna make them from going darkest to lightest from layer one to layer four all right guys so everything's pretty much done at this point you have all your layers separated and <clears throat> it's all looking pretty good now all you really have to do is print at this point. Um, one way you can save ink is just by turning down the opacity um, on your layers, just so you're using less black ink up. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you can comment, subscribe, just do anything to pretty much help us out, it would be greatly appreciated because this actually took a long time to put this tutorial together. And I will be putting more out in the future. And the tutorials I will be putting out is basically like cutting, how to print across multiple pieces of paper, and various tips and tricks. So if you subscribe, you definitely can get more tutorials. Um, even if you don't subscribe, just it'd be really appreciated for you to stay active with the channel and just check in every now and again because views are equally as important as subs to us. So 
Hopefully this helped you guys out and I will see you later.